the scenario. Imagine these kids, these people come in from out of town to meet their daughter who's in college. They're sitting down eating a cheeseburger at the Hard Rock, and in comes 5,000 kids. Aerosmith, the mayor, and this guy with the big lips gets up and says, I'm glad I got a chance to put my bologna in the Aerosmithsonian. <laughs> and they sit back, sit back and order dessert. That's what kind of day it's been. Well, actually, this Aerosmithsonian was at our last rehearsal hall. That's when we first coined it, because the roadies would fill up uh, the road boxes with all the ladies' Underwear. underwear and bras and stuff that would be thrown on the stage through the course of the tour. And then, then at the rehearsal hall, they would put it up there and we'd walk in every day and there'd be more and more of it as they would pull it out of the road boxes. And that's when we started calling it the Aerosmithsonian. Besides, it's better to see my permanent vacation suit on the wall at the Hard Rock than down at Goodwill on some bum. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked up. One one place dro I almost dropped. dropped out, I almost dropped the stick. So like, but that's just one shot. That's no problem. You just cut that. Okay. And the other thing that I fucked up was this is a, going to the guitar uh, solo. I went to the hi hat for like one bar uh, instead of the bell and the cymbal. Not bad. And what came out of it? A four? four. Really? How could you do that? That's not even noticeable by anybody anywhere in the house. Come on. I I watch it. You can, know, you can notice the three milliseconds, but you can't notice well, that. Well, I watched the way that went. I don't care if it's like a snowstorm in there. Don't go to that guitar. We can make a snowstorm. <laughs> can you do that? Yeah, I have a load of styrofoam. Styrofoam with grease blowing down the fucking tunnel? Yeah. That'll be excellent. You can smash stuff, you can break stuff, and you can have complete mayhem. You're going to want it to build a little bit until the section. Tom will give you a big cue, and that's when I want everything to go crazy. Tom will do this. Smash with your hand on your head. Yeah? You hit the fleshy part. Get some ice. I'll tell you the good news. What? There's nothing I ever liked in film before. You got it though, right? Yeah. 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 What the fuck is the problem? Did someone go down there and do that door? It's it's something that they're gonna get because it's a rush. Okay, it's a rush. It's one. It's not one, two, three, pull. It's one, two, three, four, pull. Okay. One, two, three, four, pull. That's it. One, two, three, four, pulls. I like to do videos of Marty Coleman because he gets me to travel in cyberspace. Bam! <laughs> That's where we're going this time. One step beyond. One step. Goal we go where no band is going before. <laughs> He's taking us there. We're going up. To the galaxy. Two million miles away. Light years to the next one. I can remember in 1971 going over there with Joe and Tom. Sitting in their in the living room of the house, Buddy Miles' house, and Buddy was like gagged through the nines, but and so were we. But sitting there on a the couch with them and going, What's it like to go on tour? What's it like to stay in a hotel? We're worrying about, you know, the 150 bucks for the, for the rent, right? Playing bun ratties. What's it like to go on tour? Man, I would love to be a, in a fucking big band and just get out there. And, and they tell me stories and go, Ah, it's boring. I wake up in the morning and it's but. For me, what a dream yeah. to, to pack your bags. Mm -hmm. Just to pack your bags. Take the stuff out of the dresser and put it in the bag because I'm going on tour. How do you keep going? You know, two hours on stage, you know, what's that, 18 months, something like 250 well, you gigs. Probably, you walked up on stage in the whole front row with a girl going like this. Wouldn't you keep going too? <laughs> Ow! Aerosmith on The Simpsons? No way. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it, right there. No, wait, wait, wait. Oh, that's excellent. Oh, that's great. great now. By November, that way, no way thing is going to be real old. Oh, look at that's that. That's versions. Well, you Wait, think so? It is. They can it's crab apple. Crab apple. Crab apple. Crab apple. Mrs. Crab apple. Huh? Crab apple. Oh, Aerosmith on the Simpsons? No way! Way. way. Oh, man, you got to go way. Is <laughs> Steven going to sing all this stuff? No. So I guess Mo, Mo's just going to, like, kind of 
sing along with the track <coughs> while we sway. Did you do this already? No, we, no, we did it. Well, what you mean? Hank. Hey, Hank. Hey, hey, you call me Mo. <laughs> hey, Mo, get up here. Let's get some ad libs. This is when Mo is on the stage uh, trying to pull you guys up, you know, to do the song. So you guys should be a little reluctant, and Mo's trying to encourage you to come on and do a little number. Steif and Zuckel, maybe a little. Yeah, we want we want some Steif and Zuckel. Steif and Zuckel gets us there. <laughs> Hi, this is Brad Whitford. And Joe Perry. And Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. And you just fucking walked into our shot, butt, butt breath. Hold on, some more Aerosmith. A esta guitarra es para un fan de Sputnik y Aerosmith. Donde esta la ceferveta? <laughs> oh! Con Banwa Aerosmith de su concert dia macho! Oh! Yes! <laughs> yeah. Here we go, ready? Say when. Say when. Hi, this is Brad Whitford. Joe Perry. And Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. And you're watching Top Ten. Let's do it again. It's pop ten. Pop ten. What's the difference? Welcome, guys. Welcome to, to Panama City. Uh, as we see behind this, the, uh, the 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 hairless cat heralds the arrival of a new new Aerosmith record. The hairless this... cat. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, well, let me ask you about that first of all. Is there something some deeper meaning to the the cats all over the album? And well, somebody mentioned that question to us like a couple weeks ago, and it finally dawned on Joe Perry that we finally, after all these years, on got bold pussy on our album. Shaved, and you know, it was like one of those things you'd, you'd expect that that was the first thing that we would have thought of, you know, it being Aerosmith and all that, and all. And uh, we went through the photo session and did all that, and we're looking at the artwork, and, it, and someone pointed out that it was a shaved pussy on the cat on the cover, and it was like, wow, yeah. there you go. Yeah. <clears throat> so let me ask. Here we are in Florida, and uh, you guys, of course, about a year ago Freezing were in Florida. Butts well. off, I'm right. Dead. I'd imagine. <laughs> I'd imagine it was a bit warmer down in South Florida, in Miami, where you first started working on this thing. Tell me why you decided to go down there to work and uh, how that all came to get together working with Ballard. Well, somebody like told us we could never pull it off going to an island. We'd never get to work. We had to prove them wrong, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, no, it was, I don't know, Joe worked on it with Glenn Ballard. No, we had a good time down there. It was a, it was a place we could go and, uh, and hang out. It was the, the Marlin Hotel. They let us have almost the whole floor and there was a studio in the basement and they let us camp out there for a couple of months. And here you kind have like a... tight and small, but that's how we like it. Hey, Joe? Yeah. Part of the reason for going there was to go down and write some more songs, you know, and that's where a lot of things came out, you know, Pink and Falling in Love is Hot on the Knees and uh, Actually Nine Lives was written there in the in that room in the back, and, and it, it just, uh, the whole atmosphere was great. Thank God we're writing a new album. And this is the room that we have all set up to catch all those vibes in the drift net of... When we were down there, I, we had a MTV crew down there, uh, I think it was May of last year with you guys, and, and for all intents and purposes, the impression was it was going well and everything. At least what I've read is that, is that what happened was um, you guys decided, well, maybe we don't want to go so heavily in the direction that the record that we've come up with with, with Glenn Ballard. Can you talk to me about the, the decision into it came into uh, sort of putting aside some of those tracks? Well, you know, we did uh, experiment with loops, and, and we, we did go in another direction deeply. But the most part was Joey wasn't on the record. And we tried um, tracking with uh, Steve Ferroni, Eric Clapton's uh, drummer. And it just, it just wasn't Aerosmith. I mean, were there ever times where you guys would have been surprised to be sitting here talking about a new record, you know, six months later? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was, we, we um, we probably reached a point where we all weren't sure if you know, the band was going to continue, really. Uh, it, it had gotten that disjointed. And uh, you know, it took a lot, of, a lot of work. to. We had to sit down and really find out. We, we didn't know. Mm -hmm. So we, the communication had broken down so completely, and we needed a chance to go away and go, hello, hi, you know, yeah. and, and get reacquainted and, and get in touch with uh, the mission statement. Stephen, did, how about you? Did you have doubts at all? Or were you determined well, that it was going to? You know, there were so many rumors flying around. 
that went public before they, sh you know, I mean, they should have been talked amongst the band before, you know, somebody went public with some of the allocations. But, you know, uh, as far as the drugs go, you know, I was stoned out of my gourd on the music and the writing process. And, and even that's, uh, I mean, uh, you know, there's been times when I've been found hanging from the ceiling coming up with a good lyric. Yeah. But down in Florida, you know, the, the worst it got was I stayed up a couple nights, you know. And, uh, and if some people saw that as, as I was back in some kind of drug behavior, well, they didn't know me when I was using <laughs> it. was a big blue funk. And basically what the big blue funk is was uh, a depression. I went into a really deep depression. He came down there a week before we were supposed to roll tape. He was down rehearsing. The next thing I know, he's on a plane out of there and uh, unavailable for comment. Uh, a lot of issues came up for me that I had to deal with on my own. You know, a lot of stuff about around my childhood and my, I had lost my dad a little while back. It was sort of an emergency that came up for me and I had to go and take care of myself. That was the most important thing to do at the time. You know, people have come to us and go, this could break up your band, your band's gonna be over because of this. And, you know, we kept hearing things like that and we would look at each other and go, you know, we're, we're, we're the band, we haven't, that hasn't crossed our minds yet. And we were hearing stuff like, he might not come back for a year, he might, might not come back at all. So we elected to go in there with somebody else and uh, play the drums. And hopefully Joey would come back and, and sit in on the sessions and maybe go over the, the other drums and stuff. At least we would have had the, the uh, tracks done. And when I did that, we did five or six tracks and they, they just weren't working right because of, by virtue of how the band records. You know, the, it's usually the five of us in the studio at the same time, all in the same room. And uh, obviously, here's the drums, and uh, usually we put the drums kind of in the middle here. Get the sound up. You put mics way up there. You can get the, the camera up there. I don't know if you can. See way up there? Those are very important microphones up there, high on the ceiling. We use that a lot because you get a lot of the, the top end from the cymbals and the, the crack of the snare drum echoes in the room. That's why this room is so good for drums. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite drum rooms in uh, North America, anyway, you know. This place used to be called the Power Station, and uh, it's it's actually one of my favorite rooms to work in because of all the, the wood, and you can see how big the room is. And uh, as far as the sounds on the album, uh, one of the reasons I'm real happy with it is because we didn't use any samples at all. The all the drums that you hear on the album, everything's organic, and it's the way this, the drums sounded right in the studio. There's no samples used at all in any place. It's got the sound, it's got the vibe. And fortunately, somebody came in and said, you know, this is too, too great of a studio to, uh, to let it go, you know, the way of digital. And uh, fortunately, and we were one of the first bands to come back in after it got, um, it got bought up. And they, they didn't change anything in there except, uh, you know, they soldered a few wires together to keep it from falling apart, you know, but it's a, it's a great great sound in place, you know. I can't think of recording anywhere else. And uh, often there you got Steven. Uh, basically, he's always doing, even when we're doing basic tracks, he's always singing because we, uh, we very often use those basic tracks for, uh, for keepers. So he has to be in an isolation booth. Plus, he won't hurt anybody when he gets excited. I'm sitting at the drums one day when I had absolutely nothing to do. Of course, I only do this when the Kramer leaves. And I thought that we want to maybe get a little more tribal, you know? And I took that and I said, well, since I don't want to step on Joey's toes, what can I play that he can play that that would enhance what he's playing? So I went out and I got a garbage pail. I turned it upside down and I did this thing. Well, I remember the first time we came down, the first place you took me was someplace in Times Square to get some raw oysters and Guinness. And a lot of Guinness and a few raw oysters. Just that was a setup, you know that, right? Yeah. And so I was convinced. And then when, when we came down here, uh, just around the corner to get uh, espadrilles, you know, those uh, cloth shoes. Yeah, with the we would hit the... Uh, we would hit the... The Electric Circus, which is now a meeting place over here. Yeah. 
Trash in Vaudeville was not here. Yeah. But uh, Sindori Imports, hey man. Sindori Imports would pick up some some incense yeah. to cover our tracks. Yeah. And then hit um, yeah, Fillmore there. East. Look over here. This is where my roots started. This is called the Orpheum Theater now, but it used to be called the Anderson Theater. Really? That's where I first saw the yard birds, right No in there. kidding. That was the place where you lugged uh, Jimmy Page's ants. No, no, no. That was in Connecticut when you played me. It was another dream come true. But this is the first time we saw them, because you could come right out of there and go over here to the Fillmore East. Well, that's a great theater to see a band that. Oh, man, it's tiny. And I remember that night, yo! Yeah! Yeah! And I remember that night so, so well, man. I just remember coming over and seeing, um, what was that, fresh garbage. Oh yeah, Spirit. Our, uh, Spirit. Spirit and, uh, and the Jefferson Airplane. Kid. Really? Yeah. You think you're in love like it's a real sure thing, and every time you do, you get your ass in a sling. You used to be strong, but now it's ooh, baby, please, because falling in love is so hard on the knees. You know, all this stuff started coming out in the papers, you know, about, the, about you know, Stephen using and people extrapolated that out to being, you know, he's back on heroin and all this stuff. And, you know, the bottom line is that it's nobody's business but ours, you know. In the late 70s, when the band started falling apart, you know, our shows started to suck and our, the records weren't as good, you know, then it becomes, it becomes everybody's business. But until that happens, you know, it shouldn't, shouldn't matter to anybody what we do. Yes. He went to the press uh, with a bunch of lies about my sobriety and a bunch of other stories. But he's just, um, he was just in a bitchy mood, you know. Uh, the album was great, so it's no skin off my nose. He's just kind of, you know, um, bad reflection on himself. But we let bygones be bygones. And God, I know you're busy. I've seen your schedule. Well, could you please come down and bless us upside the head for some better lyrics? More on the even keel of your word. Amen. How you doing, man? Doing What's good? up? How are oh, you, man? my God. I'm Chris. I'm All your right, biggest, Steven, biggest man, without you. a doubt. All right. I thank you so much. All right. I've waited my whole life just to come here and talk to you and let you know beautiful. how much your music has meant to me. And uh, I just can't believe this has all happened so fast. I'm speechless. Like, this has been so quick. Everything. One of the reasons I stayed in this band all these years is because I'm a big fan, too, you know? Yeah. I look over, I see Joe Perry, and I think, wow, man, we're going to go do this again? We can go out and rip it up again, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I understand what you're saying. Dream On, Seasons of Wither, Pink, Love in an Elevator, they're all you, but they all sound so differently. So, like, diversity is the biggest thing. And I hope it's amazing because it's all Aerosmith, and somebody's going to be turned on by something. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. Thank you. No, hey. No, you know, no, we no. sit in a room, and we come up with something, and, and we see it through, and uh, I take it home, and I write some lyrics to it, and then the next day we come in, we do something else. What is it like to, like, not be able to go out in public and be noticed? Like, being incognito, I mean, you won't be able to do that, really. <sighs> Two ans twofold answer. One, it sucks, and two, it's what I always wanted. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I can't wait to, you know, um, I'm one of those people that, uh, and some of my bandmates don't agree with me, but I think that, um, that even though the fans can be nuts sometimes that, that I deserve, it's the least I can do is give them an autograph, and, you know, when I get home and I look at my house and, and my car, I'm really grateful. Yeah. I'm really grateful to the fans. It's like, thank you. How do you want to be remembered when everything's all set and done? What do you want to be known for? Somebody that was like a musical doctor that made people feel good, you know, and, and in times of, you know, grief and life on life's terms, or, um, or just, you know, be a piece of their life, you know. That just gets me off so yeah. big. It gets me off so big. So I would say that, um, that I could bring some joy, you know. Oh, without a doubt, you bring joy to millions. I can't thank you enough, and I just really, I, I'm so glad you took the time out to, to do this. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Now I feel like I wanted to cry, but I'm trying not to. Ah. I'm doing my best, man. Drink to that. I cry all the time, man. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'll join you. All right. Need we all ready for Stephen Todd of Maris, man? Here it is! Whoa! Yeah. Stephen! 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 Hi! Oh, um... Stephen, over here! Oh, over here, Stephen. It's Sikens' eye! It's Sikens' eye! I was just sitting at a... Coffee table in France eating a uh -oh. Bois de Mignon. Oh, lovely. And what, and what happened? Well, we kind of... I've been um, beamed up, 
Ah, yes. You've been beamed up into outer space. Well, sort of an alien. All puffy. An alien abduction. <laughs> no. Oh, how oh, horror. <laughs> no, yes, it's Lieutenant, Lieutenant Z. Z. Lute Lieutenant who? Lieutenant, Lieutenant Z. 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 Yeah. See, it's like um, zigzag and Z. May I please have a tuna fish sandwich? Woo! Hoo ha! Woo! Hoo ha, baby! Ow! It's, I'm sorry, Stephen. I think she fancies me. I think I'm working on her. I think she fancies me. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Lieutenant Z! Hi! Yes, Captain Zach. Hi! Just saying hi. Uh, Do you want the facts? Oh, yeah, please. Yeah, please. Right, okay. Hi, welcome aboard. How are you? Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Are you responsible for that beaming? Oh, you're beaming. Yes, yes okay. Yes, she is. She, she was. Um, she's beaming. The first fact I have here, the first rock fact. Stephen plays many instruments, but he once drummed with Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr! Oh, yes. How the Starmeister. How perceptive of you, Z. She knows everything, Stephen. It's my equipment. She knows everything, Stephen. <laughs> okay, fact number two. His favorite Aerosmith <laughs> song to drive to is Highway to Hell. Ooh. It's not Aerosmith, you see? You see, you got that wrong. ACDC. She, she doesn't know everything, Stephen. She doesn't know everything. Almost everything. What really? Is that your favorite driving song? Oh, positively. It was a way to hell! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did I say a magic word? No, no, boy. Well, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Carry, Carry on. Carry on, on, darling. Fact number three. Now, I've got unconfirmed sources oh, from the internet that says he collects stickers off of tropical fruit. Couldn't be true, could it? Is that true? Yeah, true, yes. You see, because you it stems from when I was a little boy and I yeah. wanted to be, I'd take a, uh, a, a banana sticker. Yeah. My favorite was Chiquita, yeah, just yeah. so I could be one of the bunch. Oh! Oh! And, to this, and to this very day. We've got a present we've for you, Stephen. Present for you. you do? Yes. Check that out. It's, it's basically stickers from Egypt and oh, the rare pomegranate it. stickers. I've never seen this one there here. There you go. We I'm thought we'd treat it. you. I'm going to put Stephen. it right there, right now. Do you um, feel no, left no, out a bit? Can I have one, please? Darling. Thank you. So, Stephen, which was your favourite video? Which one do you think? I if you had to vote. I'd say the wallflowers. Yeah, they are cool. Aren't you? Yes, we are. I think maybe we should beam you down. I'm going to get back to my croissant. We've got to say thanks. And All right, well, thanks for about, having me. How about coming back on Friday what with the thing. rest of the can guys? I bring the rest that? of the guys? I sure think can. you can. Yeah? Sure can. Will you have an apple with stickers for them, too? Well, I can't guarantee it, but we'll do it better. All right. <laughs> Stephen Tyler! <laughs> yes, indeed! <laughs> Part two of Alien Alarm, we've got Aerosmith! Yeah. Aerosmith! Yeah. On board today! Yeah. Now, you're not really superstitious, are you? No, no, no. I didn't think so. No, 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 no. no. All right. No, 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 no. No superstitions today. All those stories about those spaceships happening to, you know, collide Crash and their career into... Right. Just, no, no, no. Nothing like that's going to happen. You're really, really space myths. Because, like, you're like Aerosmith. You're like our lucky charms. That's what you are. Yeah. 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 It's cool. But I'd be so lucky look, if I started doing this. No, 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 no! Oh, no. <laughs> oh thank goodness it didn't do it. It's All unbelievable. Right. Don't never, never press red buttons. No. Okay. Guys, you frost think, the freezer. <laughs> I think it's idea. yes, exactly. Okay. Make the coolest videos. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank she was a babe. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 we had almost nude girls on our show this morning. That's because <laughs> Aerosmith here. We can get away with it, can't we, Zeke? No, I don't know. Okay. Yes. Well, that, can I just say, first well, of all, that I know, I happen to know, right, that Aerosmith, the group, has always sustained an interest in pickling, correct? Eh? Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And, 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 and so it's so it's it's Having being pickled ourselves or something. <laughs> <laughs> but it's my favorite thing. Not only that I used to eat pickled eggs all the time, yeah. but, but how else do you save certain things unless you can pickle them and get your own jar and, yes. and get yeah. your paraffin no, 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 no. and to put it on the top and seal it up and wait, wait, keep wait, it for a rainy day? You're a true enthusiast. You're actually into pickling. Are you serious? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, definitely. I think we should take a look yeah. at this very exciting saw, new film. I found film. this in the garden this morning. Uh, it's springtime and the bugs are out, as you can see. Oh, oh, oh this is yeah. very good. And this, this these, these are my, my picks. I wrote every song on uh, Nine Lives with this. No way! These picks, and I decided to save them. What a coincidence! And they'll be great to eat in about 10 years. In about 10 years, time to mature. And this is my favorite toy. But really, what I love to pickle the most yeah. is because you, when you pickle it, you can save something forever. Yeah, forever. Yeah, so forever. I was thinking, maybe if I just went and screamed in a jar and yes. closed it up real quick. You could, you could, yeah. technically. And closed it up really quick. Yeah. You could save it forever, quick. so watch this. Okay, let's, let's All right, go here we go. Yeah. But you gotta do it quick, yeah. so watch fast. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Amazing. Now, Can we now, save that one? Well, now check this out. Watch. <laughs> watch, watch. 
That's unbelievable! <laughs> that is so amazing. Wow! OK, guys, it's, it's time for the premiere. It's time for the premiere. The We're going to see a film pickle. about pickling. Get pickling. Oh, sorry, Tom. <laughs> Tom, that's a kid show. <laughs> Just now, Tom. Tom, what have you pickled for us today? I, do I get to say yes. it now? Yes, everyone, oh, wow. get Tom now, please. As I was trying to say... Sorry, Tom. Yes, sorry, Tom. Before. Yes, sorry, Tom. Yes, Tom. Well, one day I didn't have a razor and I needed to shave, so okay. I figured, you know, maybe if I pickled my beard, it would come off and Excellent. look. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. And, uh, I wanted to keep it, so I put it in this jar. It's a treasure, Tom. Yeah, it's a treasure. And I take it with me wherever I go. It's a wonderful thing. Ladies Thank and gentlemen, you. Aerosmith here yeah. in our spaceship. Yeah. Guys, th thanks for coming in. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. It's been an absolute pleasure. But now we've got to go back to Earth. We've got to go back to Earth. bring my pickles with Yes, of course, of course. you can, right, sir. I'm going to hold on real tight. All right. Hold Here tight, goes. Are you ready? Here we're going. Are you ready? Earth. I'm ready. Back to the big breakfast. Good morning and welcome back to The Big Breakfast. I am very excited this morning because I'm joined by rock legends. They are Aerosmith! Yay! Yes! How are you doing, fellas? Hey, Sarah. How are you, you all right this morning? Oh, yes. I like this. You blend it with the bed. Perhaps you can put this on your legs. Don't you? Just like you think so? See, so now there I am. <laughs> I'm gone completely. <laughs> but we can't cover your toenails. Look, just take a look at these. Glitchy well, no, no, that's not fair. Oh, Show them yours. Oh. Show them yours. Look, Kitchy, got my blue Kitchy, Kitchy. We should be sitting together, really, shouldn't we? I think we? we should. Is that what you meant by switching? Yes. Switch! switch. Come on. Switch. All, right. All change. All change. You come over okay. here. Move along, move along. Thanks. And you like six cushions as well, is that right? Now I knew what you meant there by you continuity Stephen. before, because you know now what? You it just in. doesn't matter. <laughs> now. Right. Now I want to talk to you about your career. Is it right that you started in about 1973? My career? Your career. Is it true you started in about 1973? 71. Right, well, I was born Sometimes in 74. Started in 1970, but we, we all weren't there, so. I was born in 74, so I need you to fill me in on yeah, the well, we weren't of your involved. career. Yeah, uh, well, we weren't involved. The early part of career. Were we? We actually released. Yeah, it. Dry. <laughs> the very so, first album Dream On was on, and it took three more albums before the public got hip to the song. Right. So the first three albums were very sad. Oh. We all thought it was over and we were washed up. Really? Before Is it true that you don't remember recording those, some of those albums in the 70s? Yes, but it was the later on ones. Because you were being a bit naughty, weren't you? <laughs> Very naughty. Very naughty, but you're not Substance naughty anymore. Substance abusers. No, no, not no. Not naughty anymore. Tea and crumpets, darling. <laughs> OK, now, your new album is called Nine Lives. Yes. And it was released on March the 10th, but it was supposed to be released in September. So why did that change? What happened? It came out later. Yeah, that's obvious. Very good. There you go. <laughs> but why? We're why was that? Late. Why did you put it off? We had um, a producer named Glenn Ballard. They brought us down to Florida, and we wrote a bunch, most of the songs in Florida. And uh, we took a listen to it, and uh, one thing led to another, and we went and re-recorded it in New York City, mm -hmm. and so it was pushed up a little. Right. I feel very upright here. Do you feel upright, yes. Susan? Let's, let's, I think let's I need to on. just move this back just a touch. There you go. Get comfortable. So it's uh, called Nine Lives. So do you like cats? <laughs> <laughs> Major felines, lady. Is that <laughs> a <laughs> That's a setup if I've ever heard one. That's very good, actually. It is a good show, though, right? Wow, wow. That sounded like you just turned. <laughs> so, how many lives have you lost so far, then? Oh, well, we've Lord. lived many, many lives, I think. I think it's and you don't off, remember that many. We're living well. off the interest from the first nine. <laughs> okay, now in 1986, Run DMC mm. covered Walk This Way, mm. and you appeared in their video. Mm. Do you think this was the big Aerosmith comeback? Oh, positively. It was like the shoehorn in the boot. It got us going again. Yeah. Definitely. It definitely helped over here, to especially. We were surprised at what a big impact it made. Because a lot of people think that that's the first time Aerosmith came around over here. Yeah. You See, know. for me, that's what I thought. Because well, I go. missed yeah. out on all the early part. Yeah. Mm. You know. Well, in the States, it was, I, was I mean, we were already going. And things like that. <laughs> wham. <laughs> and wham. Okay. Now, your great show is Friends with Zig and Zang, is that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Well, you know, they're where we used to live. <laughs> the we'll dark the side the of the moon. I mean, we we so hang we have with to, them all the time, you know? We have to keep in touch with them and ask them what it's still like. Because <laughs> they're famous pop <clears throat> stars. Because did you know they released a rap record? It was oh, a huge yeah. success. They sent us their cassettes and we listened. And did you like it? Loved it. So would loved you like it. to record I with them? I picked their single. Really? Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Tell your ma, tell your pa, love's gonna grow, <laughs> ooh-ah, ooh-ah. <laughs> and I told them to harmonize on the ooh-ah, ooh-ah part, but they said, nah. Okay. So I said, okay. The only weird thing is, you know, I, I, I asked for their phone number and they kind of went, oh, well. 
You had well, to get it from Z. Well, you can't call them because they're Z. in space. Z would have given it. Oh, Z. that oh, was yes. the She's that's the one it. that's here, I can tell him. Mm. All right, so would you ever team up with them and perhaps record with Zig and Zag, do you think, well, in the sure. future? If we could just get them down from space, you know. Yeah. Spending so much time up there. All right, well, I'll have Yeah, but I hear they wear a rug. Listen, guys, thank you very much. It's great talking to you. They're absolutely lovely, aren't they? It's Aerosmith! We're going to talk a little bit more just later on about the personal stuff, OK? So get prepared for that. But now stand by for a very good reason to be cheerful on Channel 4. I said it is Aerosmith! Yay! Now, who was it? Because I read somewhere that in 1991, one of you checked into a clinic because of your sex drive. Oh, it was you, wasn't it? Was it? I. I can what tell. were you saying about my pillow not being there, and then I was I was too erect for you? What was that? Oh, see, oh, now oh, that's me. that's a trigger word. So Let's is this true? Right did you did you actually go into a clinic? I went in, actually. I went in for codependency, and while I was there, they said, "Well, have you ever?" I said, "Well, yes." They said, "Well, did you ever?" And I went, "Well, yeah." They said, "Get in that room." Really? Oh yeah. <laughs> we need to take a good look at that. So I, I went in there, and I kind of got off on their stories and. They gave him less, <laughs> but the only but the thing is, he, it never took. He so, came out even worse. You know. Now, and is it true that you actually right. came out with a sign manager and they say, no, I said, anybody who wrote a song called Dude Looks Like a Lady has got to have some un un problems that need, need unearthing. And I said, what? <laughs> so I was, uh, I was taillights, as they say. Did it work? Did it actually work, though? I got a chance to look at, uh, yeah. It worked a little bit, sure. Just a little bit, though. For yeah, you know, I can either be this way or that way, and so now I choose to go right down the middle of the road. So did you come out with this sign, Roger? Right I don't have any fluff on my lips, and you have it all. Oh! Yours. What did you say before? <laughs> She's going like this. I can't tell you what I was talking about in the break. Now, you, is it true that you actually came out? I want to get this out, that you came out with a sign around your neck saying, no female contact. Oh, is that true? Oh, God. Is that true? No. No? No. It was male that contact. Somewhere. They told me to stay away from these guys. <laughs> <laughs> they well, said, that's where I got it all from. didn't mind at all, either, so. <laughs> now, you and Joe Perry used to be called the Toxic Twins, is that oh, right? Yes. Now it's Roxic Twins. <laughs> Roxic. So what's the most outrageous thing that you've ever done when you were completely <sighs> up there with Zig and Zag? Well, they couldn't get us off the double-decker bus when we did, uh, what was that big show we did in London in 76? Big outdoor. You mean Reading? Yeah. Uh, Reading Festival. The Reading Festival. 77. They could not get a 77. They could not get us off the We thought upper we'd level. already played, you see. Yeah. And so we thought the show was over, so <laughs> we were gone. So Joe was rehearsing, train kept it rolling, and I just got it in my head that that was the song we ended with and that we'd already played. <laughs> and it's all in the book. Which book? We're coming to a store near you this fall. <laughs> Come on then, tell us about this book. Have, yeah. you, have you written a book? Yeah, we're just uh, finalizing it, yeah. Brilliant. So when can we expect to see that in the shop? Hopefully this fall. fall. Brilliant. I look yeah. forward to that. I'll have to read up. And it's got now, that one in it. Is it true yeah. that you now have a much healthier lifestyle, that you go to the gym and everything? Well, yes. We're just talking about Mr. Peck Deck over yes. here. Now he Moonhead <laughs> Roger. Roger McLifto. <laughs> <laughs> yes, do you work out all the time then Oh, the yeah. Well, you know what happens is you're on stage for two hours. I lose a pound a night. Not money. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's just, you know, it takes, it takes it out of you, you know. So I'd rather pay the fiddler on a treadmill than do it in front of everybody up there. You know, so I have to look my best. And you do look your best. Well, you're thank fantastic. You. Thank you. And you've got a bit of a Peter Andre dress going on there. Can I have a feel? Do you wax? Do you wax? I like careful. Peter Andre's that's got right. very mm -hmm. perfect pants. See, I'm, from, I'm from the States. I don't know what that's Oh, he's a pop about. star. Oh, don't do look. That, man. look at that girl. I'm 46 years oh. old. Well, you, know? you look absolutely great. Right. No, he doesn't. He's like me. He's got this uh, wild. Uh, it's not Italian vibe. Is it? What is it? <laughs> I don't know. Mediterranean thing, you know? Yeah. It's like. Uh, See, we're both from this. how it goes. Not a thing. It's lovely, not a thing. There you go. Smooth as a baby's bottom. <laughs> okay, now, is, how do you feel about being voted one of the sexiest men in America? Or the sexiest man in America? Well, I don't know about that. I have to ask my wife. Yeah? <laughs> I was voted the sexiest woman well, in America. I'm not Hastings. talking about me. Let's talk about you. What do you think about me? That was easy. I think you're very sexy, but then I don't want to get into any rucks with your wife. Mm. Okay, now, how do you feel about being labelled a sex symbol? I think it do goes you quite like it? Are you flattered? I just have a blast up on stage, and whatever people get out of that, you know. I just... Do you still do all like your head banging and everything? Oh, positively. It's called bonking. Bonking? <laughs> well, well, can you teach me to bonk? And what's, what's the secret? <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, but now... you got to have the beat first. <laughs> now, very quickly, before we go, I want to talk to you about your daughter, Liv Tyler. Ah. It's absolutely beautiful. You must yeah. be so proud of her. I am very. So what do you think of the film Stealing Beauty? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. And then I saw the European version. And I became and then what daddy. <laughs> so what? You didn't tell me you did that. Protective daddy. Oh, yeah. You Do know you... what? The good thing is is that, you know, you have your daughter you, who you've known forever, and you see her face on stage, and suddenly she really does 
bleed into the character that she's trying to be, and you know mm -hmm. that somebody's really got that magic. You know, kind of like you sitting up here and just oh. being so natural. Thank you. Do you, you know? get kind of choked when you watch her? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw Stanley Beauty in New York. Oh, my name cries when she and watches then, me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she, she gets really emotional. I've just lost my hair clip there. You can have that little Thank treat. Thank you very much. Okay, well, listen, guys, thanks. It's been absolutely great talking to you this morning. I've really enjoyed it, and I look forward to the book. It's Aerosmith, right. everybody! Yay! Well, 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 I feel it's like I'm falling in love. You are here to party. <laughs> and to come and see and meet Aerosmith. Yeah. <laughs> and we were just saying, oh, where should we go then? And Steve Tyler's like grabbing, grabbing my collar like, so it's like, oh, shit, oh, I can't wait to meet him. It's really good. I, I like the way they get in touch with the fans, you know? The party is absolutely blinding. Free beer, free music, top music. What more can I say? Aerosmith says that other bands swank, but they fuck, and that is exactly, That's exactly what, they what they do, man. They're fucking the best. I'm going to tell Stephen Tyler he's the sexiest man in the world because he is. Brilliant for the fans to be able to come to meet the meet the band. Absolutely superb. Rock! When I saw them tonight, I just thought, this is what rock needs at the moment. Is it a new cool or some kind of a booty that fits me like a velvet glove? <laughs> I think the the girl with the sparks, yeah. you know. That was good. The whole party is just Aerosmith all over, all the theatrics and costumes. It's amazing. What did you think of the new Aerosmith album? Super. Just awesome. Great sound. I think they've been listening to what's going around and um, they've come up with a nice heavy bass sound, which I like. Yeah. I think it's quite eclectic, to be honest. It uh, offers something for a whole range of different listeners, so hopefully it'll sell millions of copies. Um, I'd say it's something different, but it's definitely Aerosmith. Absolutely brilliant. It kicks ass. <laughs> If you like the old stuff, you like the new stuff. Can I just say, the album rocks like a stunking donkey. Yeah, I had a really good time. It's the first time I've seen them, anybody like do anything like that to uh, our music, you know what I mean? Especially this record, you know, and to hear it come blasting back like that, you know, at that volume and nice and clear and everything, it was great, you know? Aerosmith, uh, this fucking album is bringing rock and roll back big time. The most important thing is bringing proper rock and roll back, and rock and roll is coming back with this album. No more set. If that's really what's going on, it's just another thing in an incredible line of magical events that have been placed there for us, you know? This record is way late. I mean, way late. And if we had released it on schedule, or say, a year ago or nine months ago, it might have been, it might not have fit. You know, because everybody wanted, you know, to really look into the pain of life and, and about stripping away everything and just getting down to the, you know, the grit. But now I think, you know, we've looked at that and that's something that, that everybody's always going to want to look at. It's not like one or the other, but if people are, are ready for it to be more about release and, you know, just, uh, you know, and enjoying music together with the band, then, you know, I, I'll be... Just pleasantly amazed if that's the way it is. And so you have it. As a rap. It's like the era of Aerosmith goes back to the future. You know, we've made a record that I think encompasses what we've picked up on our last few albums, sort of the nouveau era of Aerosmith, the post breakup get back together era, with um, the core of what we started out with, with toys and rocks and our earlier albums. So. It was just great because we've been telling ourselves and we've kind of been getting a message from out there somewhere, you know, to, to get evil, you know? And I think there's, there's just the right amount of that in this record. It was just the perfect rock and roll song. It was the song, you know, that, that, that dare we try to get some airplay out of that on the radio when alternative is so strong, you know, like the kiss your pass goodbye thing. Um, let's come out with a, you know, the rock and roll song. And we've been getting good, uh, you know, it's risk. But that's, we're paying homage to what's, what's really inside of us, you know? And so um, we've been getting good, you know, feedback from people like yourself that say, you know, and, and the kids that we played, uh, that, that we uh, debuted our album for here in London came up and said that they were really looking forward to uh, a good dose of Aerosmith rock and roll, you know? Uh, and that makes me feel really good because what better way to open up the set than with that song? You know, or nine lives. You know, just lights my fuse. Hey, here's Steven Tyler. Yeah!
to get on. Right. You haven't got much time left now, because you're yeah. doing two songs. Can I hang your coat up for you? Please do. OK, I'll just put it on the back of a chair. So, Steve, uh, this is the first time in a long time you've been interviewed without the rest of the band, is that right? Well, yes, it so, is. But so they're, all, they're over there. They're all, the band are there. They're get, there. Getting lit. Yay! Looking a little bit glum. Uh, so how come you got the short straw, then? How come it's left oh, to you? Oh, my short straw it's isn't short. Barrel. He's what? It's his turn in the barrel. His turn in the barrel. What does that mean? It's my turn in the barrel. What does that mean? Oh, I can't tell you on TV. Okay. But I like that joke about pink and whatever. What was that? Oh, that was before the show started. <laughs> but you can't say that on the air? What's the difference between pink and purple? Your grip. <laughs> the answer will have got dipped on the show, so write in, we'll tell you what the answer was. It, uh, it was... <laughs> All right, well, so... what do they call a lesbian with uh, No, we fingers? can't do this. We can't do this. We okay. can't do uh, this. Okay, I want to do it. it, but we no, can't no, no, do it. No, 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 we won't do it. No It'll all get chat. dipped. Okay. Okay. So, Steve, why? Why what? Why? Well, because. No, because but... I can. I know, but... <laughs> no, but why? 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 Why are you here with your band here and our I Ickle show, our little humble show? Well, all right, it's a great show. We're I very gotta tell you, first of all, this show is brilliant. Yeah. And when you get it to the States, you have a lawyer and a manager. Yeah. Because he's going to get a truck. Yeah. To carry all the money home. Right. You're going to be so big. Okay. <laughs> so huge. This really? show is brilliant. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, seen, but you... why we're here? We're, we're here to do our new album. And no, but uh... why? What you don't need? You don't need to come on our show. Why are you on our show? Somebody stuck the tape in the machine. Said, would you like to do this show? And we said, without a doubt. Oh well, I think. <laughs> well, can I just say, can I just say to you and to the band, right, to, to the rest of the band, can I just say, if we'd have heard the no back from your office, that no, they're not coming, we wouldn't have been offended, and we expected nothing more. We can't believe you're on the show. I can't believe it. I can't. Believe it. In fact, when you said you were coming on the show, I've, oh, I've been on the toilet. Oh, I don't know where to go. I don't. Know. <laughs> That was the opening then, huh? Yeah, that was the opening. Right. That's because of you, Stevie. You see? So I give you gas. Is that what you're saying? You do. <laughs> you give me gas. What are you really getting at? Big time. I don't know. So you've been around since 1970, your band. Yeah, yeah. Is it true that you and Joey met over a, over a uh, soda in a soda bar? Is that true? No, we went to high school together. Really? Yeah, actually, we met at Woodstock. Okay, I've just got to shoot someone who works for me. Hang on a second. Well, somebody told me that that was Joey Kramer. I don't remember a thing because I was gacked to the nines. Like Aerosmith was formed after you and Joe Perry met at an ice cream parlor in 1970. That's I'd not true. I'd have him fired. Okay. They're going to be fired. Okay. Look at the end of the show. Tonight, look at the end of the show. There's, there's the name comes up. It says, uh, um, it's one of the assistant producers called Alex Bullion. <laughs> next, next week, next week, that name will not be on the credits. <laughs> no. So, so what's an Aerosmith, then? An Aerosmith? What's an Aerosmith? It's just a rock and roll phrase. Yeah? Yeah, it's well, something that we had to invent. We came up with a lot of titles, like the hookers and... William Proud, yeah. but nothing, nothing really fit. So you were nearly called the hookers? Nearly. But why did you pick out? we turned into them, right? <laughs> Rock and roll, Joey Horace. No, no, I don't believe that. So who, who chose Aerosmith? Joey Kramer came Oh, up. Joey Kramer, there. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. We'll Joey's gone. Joey was going to have his cutaway. He's gone now. He's not there anymore. <laughs> so are you bigger now than you've ever been, would you say? No, not you personally, the band. <laughs> I would say so, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. How's that happen? We were pretty big in the 70s, and then, of course, Path of Peru and right. blew up. <laughs> <laughs> or we, Bolivia or yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah, so we 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 we, uh, we passed on our place and we decided we wanted to become professional musicians and you know yeah. not professional drug addicts okay. anymore. So and you're back now. Oh, with a vengeance. Is it true that you've signed a what is it a seventy million dollar deal, sixty million dollar deal for six more albums till you die or something? What, what, what's that? I believe it's thirty two. Thirty-two million dollars. Yeah. You're joking. <laughs> Something like that. You could buy this cup. <laughs> Easily. And what's in it? <laughs> Easily, without even thinking about it, you could just buy it, couldn't you? Six albums. Yeah. From now. Yeah. This is the first one. Is yeah. It? Okay. So th does that? You're going to do one every two years, one every three years. How's this going to work? Because oh, you're. God, are you, how old are you? Forty-seven. Forty-eight. 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 Forty-eight years old. Yeah. That means if you do one every two years, you're going to be 60, 61 or 62 when you make your final album for this company. That's it. How does that feel? A little weird. <laughs> but you can do it, though, can't you? I think so. I want you to come back because we've got to talk some more because I've got a million questions and we've run out of time because you've got All to right. play another song. All right. Would you come back? Let me have it. You sure? It. Um, you got it. Would you bring Joey and Joe? Yes. And Brad? You got it. And Tom? You got it. You promise? I promise. Okay. They're going to play us out now, Aerosmith. Come on. Second album, you go, what the hell am I gonna do for the next one? But if it just keeps working and working and you keep being put on tour, 
by your manager, Steve Lieber, David Krebs. And they keep putting you out and out and out and out and pushing and pushing and pushing. It works. You know, it works. The creativity goes out. Joe, the group has had concerts and tours all over the world, millions of album sales. Where can you go from here? You know, like we've gone through changes and stuff, but uh, we've come through ahead, which is unusual. For bands that have gone as high as we have, and then, you know, where do you go after that? I mean, uh, so it took us a while to get this album up, but now we've changed everything around and we're, you know, we're gonna do it all over again, only on a bigger scale. Steve, how was it out there tonight? It's pretty nuts. Like I say, you know, the troopers, there's so many super troopers out there, not the cops now, ladies and gentlemen. The super troopers, the lights, <clears throat> they're so intense that all you can see is past, like, uh, 50th row. So you can't see, uh, just how far it is. Yeah, just how far it's it is. Really That's good, I like that. Heavy metal used to be something different to me. Heavy metal yeah. was like Zeppelin doing Dazed and Confused and went into the ba da 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 you know, from, from real soft to, you know, a lot of emotion. And, uh, you know, heavy metal now is like, you know, um, sometimes, not all the time, but when I hear it the most and dislike it the most, it reminds me of masturbating. It's like, brrrr, and over. Good evening and welcome to How Profound Can We Be? At the end of the 80s, the Boston-based band Aerosmith stormed back to the top of the hard rock heap with two powerful albums, Permanent Vacation and Pump. New fans flocked, many of them perhaps unaware that this was a group with nearly 20 years of history behind it. It all started one night back in 1970 when a New York City drummer named Steven Tyler dropped into a club to catch a group called the Jam Band. It was an encounter that changed all of their lives. I come to find out after I went up and saw Joe Perry and Tom Hamilton in New England playing Rattlesnake Shake, that what I was doing all those years was not what it was all about. It was about like letting go and just playing, because those guys couldn't play. They couldn't tune. They were terrible. But they did one song called Rattlesnake Shake, and they blew me away. I looked at them, and I thought to myself, That's just, this is what it's all about. They had such a groove. It stunk from the groove. It was so hot. It was so bad that I said, if I can take a little bit of what I know from my father and the Dream On type stuff and the melodic stuff, and and fuse it with their badness, which I come to find out was what it was all about. It's not about practicing. It's not about taking speed and going. It's about letting go and going. Dom, dum, 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 dum. When I was young, boy, at the age of five, that's what it's all about. Well, the music is the music and stuff. I mean, we'd come from it from two different angles. You know, I'm like real energy and like, you know, let's do it now. And let's like, you know, tuning later for that. You know what I mean? Let's just see how loud we can get it, you know, and if it really rocked. We all moved into an apartment together and uh, just did everything together. You know, we uh, got up in the morning and went down to rehearsal. And then in the rehearsal, we all went and bought the same kind of beer and ate the same kind of beer nuts and came home at exactly the same t time every day and watched the Three Stooges together every day and, uh, and then started, ate dinner and then rehearsed again all night long. It was just a question of how long it was going to take because if it didn't happen for us when it happened, I think we'd probably still be doing the same thing now as we were doing 20 years ago. We started out in small gyms. We avoided clubs like the play. Right from the beginning, we wanted to get used to rooms that were at least bigger than the room at a club. Well, mostly we didn't want to play clubs because we didn't want to have to play other people's material because the songs you had to play were usually like the top 20. And that's what, that's what we avoided. I mean, we played some clubs that, that let us play our own material, especially after we started, uh, you know, when the first record came out. But for the most part, you had to just go in there and play what the, whatever the top 10 songs were. And we didn't, we didn't want to do that. And I was thinking back to what we used to do is go and promote our own shows. We took it another step. We used to rent the halls ourselves, make our own posters, and run dances. And when our first record came out, it sold, it went up to like about 40,000 units, which accounted for all our New England fans. And then it just stopped, it just stopped selling. And uh, so what do we do? So well, we take this little thing that we do and just start pushing it out into the country. And that's what we did. We hit the road. It's like we didn't stop. We played Ohio We didn't stop a until like some 1979 or something. <laughs> Working uh, any place, anywhere we could in Boston and the colleges just to get some money to pay the rent. Uh, 
and, and doing a lot of dreaming on. My room at this apartment that we all lived in was basically the living room. I mean, everybody just hung out in my room. My room was the only room big enough to put a piano in. So I woke up every morning to Stephen playing this weird song in the key of F, just telling me how much of a hit it was going to be, and it turned out to be Dream On. Aerosmith, get your wings. You see that scarf I'm wearing? It was loaded and filled up with two and alls and second alls, which is what I was just getting into during this album. It was the greatest album because one of my favorite all-time songs is on this called Seasons of Wither and Train Kept a Rolling. And same old song and dance. <laughs> and of course, this album really, really uh, broke, you know, broke everything wide open. Uh, we went out on tour with this album and all of a sudden we were rock stars. Ah, this album, Toys in the Attic. We had lots of toys in our attic when we did this album. Uh, but you can see we were still holding on to something and it was a little kid climbing into the pictures with the keys which we never found. And it was somewhere along the last album, which I came to find out that, good God almighty bless my soul, I got the right key, baby, but the wrong keyhole. <laughs> yes. And we move right on to rocks. The reason we came up with rocks is because I couldn't come up with a title. Joe Perry came up with the obvious, as he always does, and says, let's call it rocks. Because it does, because it is. <laughs> as far as the 70s went, this was the pinnacle, as far as Aerosmith's recording technique and how well we were doing uh, just getting our musical ideas happening and communicating them. Draw the Line was our fifth album. Uh, this is when the band finally realized it was successful. And uh, success began to corrupt us a little bit. By this time, we all had our own mansions, you know, Ferraris, Porsches, and all that kind of great stuff. Draw the Line. This is a great album because we did not know how to draw the line. Perhaps we did on the tabletop, but we were going way past it at this time. Uh, the Night in the Ruts album, uh, the album that broke the band. Uh, we got about halfway through this album and had to go back on the road. Our management uh, had gone ahead and booked gigs without leaving us a minute of extra time to finish this record. So, uh, you know, once we got to the... Uh, to the end of the basic tracks, we just, we had to put the project down. So uh, we went out on the road, we were, everybody was extremely burnt out and frustrated because we um, hadn't finished the record and that frustration ended up in uh, the band splitting apart. Aerosmith had become the biggest hard rock band in the land, but by 1979, they were fried from constant touring and deeply into cocaine to keep themselves going. Perry walked away from the group first to form the Joe Perry Project. He was followed in 1980 by guitarist Brad Whitford. Aerosmith replaced them with Jimmy Crespo and Rick Dufay and rocked on as best they could, but the band wasn't the same, and Tyler finally realized exactly what had happened. I attribute it all to, it's all drugs. I would never do that now. In my, what could anybody possibly do to break up a team like Perry and Tyler? What could break us up? What could anyone do? What could he do that would make me think that, uh, that I didn't want to write with him. You know, it's, it's, it's like, it had to have been the drugs that took its toll. And, you know, on one hand, you know, the cocaine made us, our, our army, march forward and tour all those times. Um, but look what it did to the band. And we just took it personally, you know, too personally. We couldn't see it. And, you know, like all, all of the stuff we were doing to ourselves and all the outside stuff that was going on, the managers and the ex-managers and all that, and ex-wives were just, um, piling all the shit on, and we were just going, well, it must be him. You know, I was going that, it must be Steven, it can't, you know what I mean? And, and everyone was going, yeah, you don't need him. And I go, okay, yeah, you're right. Well, see you later. You know, real sad thing if you look back. It's like, okay, history, the, we had to uh, lose to know how to win and all that stuff. Debatable. But we got a great album out of it. Rockin' a Hard Place again, real good album, you know. And Joe learned a real real good lesson, and, and I learned a real good lesson, you know. Which is, it's not the cough that carries you off, it's the coffin they carry you off in. <laughs> uh, somebody had this great idea, let's print everything on the record backwards. You know, here it is, our first album since getting back together, the album that we're counting on to reestablish us is being back, we've put the band back together. 
And everything is printed backwards, you know? And one thing, you know, I don't know. It's like, you know, in some ways, it's almost like we were programmed to derail ourselves every once in a while. So back in the day, we used to rock off to just the, the beginning part. Jay used to scratch it. Isk, at, ooh, 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 at. Isk, at, ooh, 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 at. No, just da 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 There is justice. Someone up there likes us. Never lose sight that we're a band together, you know, and it's like, that's the way we shall always stay. <laughs> Iowa. 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 Sioux Falls, Iowa? No, South Dakota. Yeah. You remember Sioux Falls? Only if you hit her. <laughs> <laughs> this is Air Force One, and we've been cruising at an altitude of eight miles high, baby. <laughs> On our way to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. South Dakota. I know where I'm going. Short-term memory loss, man. Hey, are we flying through the South Dakota Triangle today? Touchdown in Sioux Falls, and the band meets the public a little sooner than expected. Well, this is Sioux Falls, huh? Lots of browns and greens around here. At the arena, Kurt goes into high investigative gear. No areas off limits, including the dressing room. This is like a common thing, Steve, you know, Stephen playing percussion on your instrument. Hassle of the moment. Be quick. What to wear? I'm like going really, really, really bright colors tonight. Okay. Brown instead of black. Magic sneakers. They work every night. Decisions, decisions. I don't know what to do. It's Should so I go hard. retro? Should I do what I wore in the 70s? Yeah. Why not? The 70s are back, so well, you why not? Tell him. Yeah, the 70s are back. Who's the guy here that wants me to go? The 70s go came and went already. I know, but they're back, I'm afraid. They came back and left. Look at the as he speaks, right? Look it's at this over. guy. Home oh, with the incense and <laughs> Is that, is another drug reference? About, I thought we gave well, up drugs. Aren't we retro here? Can we talk about drugs are anymore? Are we retro? Not anymore. Joe, let me tell you something. Stephen, mm -hmm. I think you should wear the same thing you wore last tour. It's right there, the blue stripe thing. Shocking. What percentage of those songs will stand the test of time? I think 5%. Uh, that low? Well, I mean, you know, for, for, for the ones that remain in flavorful in people's memories for what was going on when they were, you know, the backdrop for their childhood. Rocks, toys in the attic, but the dream ons and don't want to miss the things and angels and Janie's got a gun. We, we've always wanted to put what the, the corporation calls the B songs. I mean, Train Kept a Rollin has been the backbone for this band's rock -dom hood forever. And the, the ballads came out because my father and the classical music and that we could. And, um, but I think the deeper stuff will be overlooked, but, but will be in the minds of a lot of people. And what the hits do for people is what you, you hear so much on the radio, you get sick of it after a while. But I still think that's 5%, right? 5, yeah. 10% of it all. Almost 30 years now, right? Mm. How does this group stay together when so many other groups split? I mean, this is the same group. This isn't like the fourth incarnation of Aerosmith with one real guy and, and four young guys. How did you stay together? It's, it's like any other any other kind of organization that's close and you know people call it have called it a marriage other pe people called it like you know a, a business where you have guys that have to work together and, and sort out their personal differences but over the years we've been lucky enough to have people to, to help us but you know we've been open to listen to them which is probably what we've done on, on our end is be able to sit there and go you know guys we really want to keep our band together what are we going to do about it and not just let it go the way of the wind how do you avoid becoming cliche We've all seen groups, they've stayed together for a long time, perhaps too long, and they start playing only the old songs. They don't come out with any new music, and I, I get the feeling that they see themselves in a different light than the 
current audience sees them? I think it's because that they're too busy seeing themselves, you know. I think that what we've been open enough to do is to let other people see us and listen to, and listen to the opinions and thoughts uh, musically, you know, to, to other people and, you know, be open to ideas, be open to what it is that's going on and not be closed to look just like, well, this is what we are and this is what we are going to do and what, this is how the songs we're going to play and that's it. This is what you see is what you get. You got to be open and, and, and be willing to change. Open to change is like, it's a beautiful thing. We made a foundation so long ago of, of you know, of just not, it's not narrow, it's not just heavy metal or hard rock. We really were going all over the place, touching on country and the ballad things we did. And we really, you know, we have a wide swath. And it's allowed us to experiment a lot more. And I think to have a lot more diversity and, and be accepted more and get, get away with a lot more. What he's trying to say is our train of thought makes all the stops. Nowadays. <laughs> 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 this, this feels a little weird. Something doesn't feel right. Uh, talking about a little vibe thing here are the facts about the last 30 years of the greatest rock and roll band in American history <laughs> they went from making $300 per night and dodging eviction notices to a string of multi-platinum albums and classic rock and roll hits like dream on mama Ken walking the dog same old song and dance train kept a rolling walk this way sweet emotion big 10 inch back in the saddle and sick as a dog <laughs> all the while while building their reputation with sold out arena shows big paychecks fast cars wild women and general rock and roll mayhem but the partying got out of hand the drugs took their toll but within a couple of years they were back to making $300 a night and dodging eviction notices. <laughs> One of the most amazing tributes to Aerosmith is that today, 30 years later, the band remains intact with all original members. <laughs> they, they have stuck together through things that would tear any other family apart. They remain the epitome of cool. They are to rock and roll what Fonzie was to happy days, what James Dean was to movies, what Ma Muhammad Ali was to boxing, what Dale Earnhardt was to NASCAR, and what Britney Spears and NSYNC were to... You know what the hell were you guys thinking on the Super Bowl anyway? <laughs> yeah. But seriously, Aerosmith's music affects us all in so many ways. So let me say it in the way that I know best. Aerosmith's music <clears throat> by Kid Rock. It makes infants rock back and forth in their car seats. It makes hip hop kids want to sample and rap to Joey Kramer's beats. It makes me want to dance like James Brown and scream, I know you got soul. It makes the sexiest women want to swing in a thong from a brass pole. <laughs> yeah. With Brad Whitford's guitars and Tom Hamilton's bass, it's the sweetest emotion that I can just about taste. With Joe Perry's licks and what Steven Tyler has to say, they've made the whole world want to walk their way. <laughs> How honored and humble I feel to be inducting into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame the greatest rock band in American history. Ladies and gentlemen, my dad, dad, dang, Aerosmith! Short and sweet, the power and the glory of this thing we call music has graced us with a moment in its light, Aerosmith, in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Wow. And my parents told me to be a dentist. Tonight, I was sitting here, I was reminded of the first album, one of the first albums I ever bought was the Mamas and Papas' first record. Unfortunately, uh, this weekend we lost John Phillips. I want to thank John and a lot of other people that influenced me. 
that got me here tonight. But to think I'm going to be included with the likes of uh, James Burton, Keith Richards, Jeff Beck, Jimmy Pace, the mind blower, and of course, uh, Joe Perry. Uh, most of all, I want to thank my, my wife, Karen, my beautiful boys, Zachary, Graham, and Harrison, who continue to support me and let me keep rocking. Thank you. When I used to sit in front of my father's stereo speakers, I would dream of being in a band, living a life of total freedom. I never knew that aside from a record contract, my dream should include making videos, having a roller coaster, winning Grammys, and being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <clears throat> I, can only, I can only be thankful to Terry, Julian, and Sage, as well as all the Jimmys, Johnnies, Micks, Keiths, and Janices. And to my parents, Betty and George, Mom, my promise still holds. When I finally get this out of my system, I'll go to college. Oh, I'm truly humbled and honored to be here tonight. And um, um, I just want to thank my mom for letting, us, letting me practice my guitar as loud as I want downstairs in the basement 30 years ago. She's sitting right there. And, uh, And I, I really want to thank our fans that have supported us from Dream On to Jaded. And uh, now we practice down in my basement. And that's pretty cool. Steven, you want to come up here? Yeah, yeah. I also got to say, I got, I got to thank these four guys. These are my brothers by choice. And man, what a strange trip. And we're still on it. I wonder if this will put an end to, hey, aren't you Mick Jagger? <laughs> you know, Aerosmith is not candy store, rock and roll, corporation jelly roll, play the singles, it ain't me, it's program insanity. You ask Cap if BMI could ever make a mountain fly, if Japanese could boil teas, then where the f is my royalties? <laughs> it's more about 1921, we all heard the starter's gun, New York was such a pity, but at Max's Kansas City, we won. We all shot the shit at the bar with Johnny O'Toole and his scar. And then old Clive Davis said he's surely gonna make us a star. But with all his style, we could see in his eyes that we was going on trial. It was no surprise. And it feels so good to be up here tonight, but this little bit I do have to read. I'd like to thank the Everly Brothers, Chuck Berry, Nat King Cole, the Beatles, the Stones, Animals, Kinks, the Pretty Things, my father Victor and Sue Tallarico, who rocked me in the cradle of classic music as I was growing up. I want to thank God and Louis Armstrong and Clive Davis and Donnie Einer and Tommy Mottola and Michelle. And John Kaladner and Seymour Stein and Jack Douglas and Jamesina. TV, radio, production, record cutters, CD burners, my wife Teresa, Chelsea, Taj, Mia, and Liv for being with me all this time and supporting me. And most of all, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thanks, Billy. Roman, Tony, Adrian, Aaron. Hi, Mom. Thank you.